Thank you very much. My fellow Americans, my first and highest duty as President is to defend our great country and the American people. I swore an oath to uphold the laws of our nation, and that is exactly what I will do. All Americans were rightly sickened and revolted by the brutal death of George Floyd. My administration is fully committed that for George and his family, justice will be served. He will not have died in vain. But we cannot allow the righteous cries and peaceful protesters to be drowned out by an angry mob. The biggest victims of the rioting are peace-loving citizens in our poorest communities. And as their president, I will fight to keep them safe. I will fight to protect you. I am your president of law and order and an ally of all peaceful protesters. But in recent days, our nation has been gripped by professional anarchists, violent mobs, arsonists, looters, criminals, rioters, Antifa, and others. A number of state and local governments have failed to take necessary action to safeguard their residents. Innocent people have been savagely beaten, like the young man in Dallas, Texas, who was left dying on the street, or the woman in upstate New York, viciously attacked by dangerous thugs. Small business owners have seen their dreams utterly destroyed. New York's finest have been hit in the face with bricks. Brave nurses who have battled the virus are afraid to leave their homes. A police precinct has been overrun here in the nation's capital. The Lincoln Memorial and the World War II Memorial have been vandalized. One of our most historic churches was set ablaze. A federal officer in California, an African-American enforcement hero, was shot and killed. These are not acts of peaceful protest. These are acts of domestic terror. The destruction of innocent life and the spilling of innocent blood is an offense to humanity and a crime against God. America needs creation, not destruction. Cooperation, not contempt. Security, not anarchy. Healing, not hatred. Justice, not chaos. This is our mission, and we will succeed. 100 percent, we will succeed. Our country always wins. That is why I am taking immediate presidential action to stop the violence and restore security and safety in America. I am mobilizing all available federal resources, civilian and military, to stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law-abiding Americans, including your Second Amendment rights. Therefore, the following measures are going into effect immediately. First, we are ending the riots and lawlessness that has spread throughout our country. We will end it now. Today, I have strongly recommended to every governor to deploy the National Guard in sufficient numbers that we dominate the streets. Mayors and governors must establish an overwhelming law enforcement presence until the violence has been quelled. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. I am also taking swift and decisive action to protect our great capital, Washington, D.C. What happened in this city last night was a total disgrace. As we speak, I am dispatching thousands and thousands of heavily armed soldiers, military personnel, and law enforcement officers to stop the rioting, looting, vandalism, assaults, and the wanton destruction of property. 
We are putting everybody on warning. Our 7 o'clock curfew will be strictly enforced. Those who threaten innocent life and property will be arrested, detained, and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I want the organizers of this terror to be on notice that you will face severe criminal penalties and lengthy sentences in jail. This includes Antifa and others who are leading instigators of this violence. One law and order, and that is what it is. One law. We have one beautiful law. And once that is restored and fully restored, we will help you, we will help your business, and we will help your family. America is founded upon the rule of law. It is the foundation of our prosperity, our freedom, and our very way of life. But where there is no law, there is no opportunity. Where there is no justice, there is no liberty. Where there is no safety, there is no future. We must never give in to anger or hatred. If malice or violence reigns, then none of us is free. I take these actions today with firm resolve and with a true and passionate love for our country. By far, our greatest days lie ahead. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to pay my respects to a very, very special place. Thank you very much. Uh, it is possible, uh, based on the logistics of where we are and how he'll be able to uh, trip here in just a few moments, that he may be going to St. John's Episcopal Church. If you look at this uh, camera that is overlooking St. John's Episcopal Church across from Lafayette, yeah. across from the White House. That we're looking at live that, pictures from St. Exactly. John's, uh, yeah. John's Church right across from Lafayette Park, uh, right over there on 16th Street. Uh, and it's, a, a, as you know, Jim, uh, every American president, uh, I think almost every American president, has gone to Sunday services there. It was, there was a fire that was unloaded in the basement of that church yesterday, a, a small right. fire. Uh, but, uh, but, but right now, you can, if the president is in fact planning on heading there, that would, uh, that would, we would now understand why the military police uh, and the Secret Service decided to use tear gas and other weapons to go in and disperse that peaceful right. crowd that had gathered there. And Jim, I just want to read what the Insurrection, Insurrection Act of 1807 says. They were firing uh, tear gas, they were firing pepper spray rounds, as well as rubber bullets to push all of these protesters out. I'm just going to ask my cameraman Peter Morris to come around. We are now at Farragut Square. This is at least part uh, of the, the protest that was out in front of the White House. And I got to tell no you, no justice, no peace, no peace, no peace, no justice, no peace, 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 uh, federal uh, officials. Now, it is important to note there is a difference between federal law enforcement and local law enforcement. That Lafayette Park, right in front of the White House, that is federal land. It is controlled by federal officers, including the U.S. Park Police, uh, and they have been the ones who were pushing uh, pushing these protesters out. There is now a curfew, as you mentioned, but there's a there's a, a whole series of metropolitan police They are not moving. Like they're, 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 they're missing the water hole. See, they're ready to spray us. They're ready to spray. Right, so Deeply you disturbing scene as we're. All right. I'm you can hear Alex as, as we get his, his audio back, everyone. I, this is what you're seeing. You're seeing President Trump now walk across the street from the White House, going to St. John's Episcopal Church. Uh, as you saw, an incredible use of force there. Tear gas, rubber bullets, you heard the explosions, all of this to clear the space for the president to go across the street to St. John's Episcopal Church. I want to emphasize that the protesters who were outside the White House were peaceful. There had been nothing, uh, there had been nothing violent at all about what they were doing. So this use of force that they just did to clear this space was, was not forced to stop violence. It was forced to stop uh, peaceful protesters who were protesting as they were allowed to do. Are shocked by the mindless violence that was conducted against our state capitol. People spray painted it. Historic uh, lights around the capitol were torn down. It was just mindless. And, and for what purpose? 
What, what, how did that honor the, the needless death of this man? How did this honor what our country should strive, be striving for, justice? Mm -hmm. what, why, why, why would people engage in this mindless violence except to tear down and destroy, to pit us against each other, to make America angry with itself? I, I admire the people in Minneapolis. I was talking to a friend of mine this weekend up there. who told, He told me about the people who came out to help you know, clean up the damage, who showed up with, with uh, with brooms and mops and energy and commitment to make their community to try and heal their community. And God bless them for doing that. That's what we need in this moment. We need we need the American people to say, look, this this we, we cannot allow this moment to be lost, to be tainted by the mindless violence of some who would seek to exploit it for their own narrow purposes. We, we as a nation ought to be focused on the necessary the necessity of providing justice to the family of George Floyd and, and asking ourselves, how can we keep that from happening again? Instead, we're, we're, we're forced to watch this. Yeah. Violence against point. our, our uh, great institutions. You know, this is a stunning image yeah. right now. We are watching as President Trump walks by areas that have been denigrated with graffiti uh, that lie right between the White House and St. John's. I mean, yeah. And here we are, as he walks towards St. John, I also want to point out, he's with the Secretary of Defense, Esper. He's with the Attorney General, William Barr. Yeah, Jared Kushner is also in this group, as I just saw a moment ago. And they are now walking over to the boarded up doors of St. John's Church, the Church of the Presidents, as the President gets a look at what has happened. And, you know, this is just... Um, it's a landmark. It, this is the yellow building that everybody sees in the middle of the screen right now, boarded up on that first floor. Those are some of the offices and the nursery that go along with this very historic church. Um, and I apologize. I know the camera work is, is tricky here because um, they're literally chasing the president uh, as he makes this really, I think, significant moment journey across this park to witness some of this damage that has been done. So we're going to wait till the... Uh, and the president now standing in front of um, of this building of St. John's, Carl. Martha, look at that. That is that great historic. Thank you very much, everybody. Right. Gonna keep it nice and safe. Hold right here. Hold right here. Hold 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 um the president with obviously some of his cabinet, the Homeland Security uh, Secretary, who has an important job right now, Robert O'Brien, is with him. Uh, we also see Bill Barr 
and Mark Meadows, the chief of staff, also in this group. Uh, Kaylee McEnany, his press secretary, is there as well um, as they appear to be making their way across the park again. Uh, the president holding a Bible uh, stood in front of the side door to the St. John's uh, Church building 